and they say there's no fear in these things. Well, I tell you what, it's it's, uh, it's impressive. This, you know, my chipping on. Well. Right, thank you for joining me down here at Conway Golf Club. Well, we're going to do some uh, we're going to do some proper testing of this new range of irons from Taylor Made. I'm going to do it with no preconceived ideas. I really haven't read a great deal in terms of the marketing blurb as yet, in terms of what's packed inside of these irons. I've got no dry ball data yet telling me, guiding me as to what these irons do. We're just going to get straight out on the course, and I'm going to give you my honest feedback from where I am. Right, where, where the, the reality where golf is played out here on a golf course. Yes, I'll give you some dry ball data at the end, but we're not going to get wrapped up in too much. We're just going to hit some shots and uh, I'll tell you how I think these things are performing. This one will be interesting because don't forget, I don't know the lofts of these, but we're playing judged on that about 160 into this green. Uh, I'm going to play the nine irons. And I think they've got enough to get me there. Well, do you know what? That is uh, the sort of uh, the mark of a good game improvement iron, in my opinion. I was just looking down to see which one I played. Uh, that is the Max. I literally, that was a terrible strike. It uh, really sort of came off the toe end and I was doubting we'd get anywhere near the green. The fact is, if we have a look at that, we've made front half of the green and I think it goes back. It's this, it doesn't change. Game improvement irons and help across the club face is there for a reason and and that's it because we just ain't good enough we're not consistent enough let's try and see if we can get a better strike with this um with the os yes i have got a nine iron right come on oh that's right down the pin ball flight's incredible and that's just bounced on the green and I reckon we're pin eye. So that's certainly, that was 160 to middle. It's at least carrying that kind of distance. So I'm assuming there's plenty of strength in the lofts on these things, but we'll find out that bit a bit later. You'll often hear me say, how do you measure forgiveness? And I think that's the best way we can possibly do it. That was that first nine iron, terrible strike. And that was the second one, which was pretty much right out the middle. In all honesty, the difference was probably, I don't know, maybe half a club, but in terms of quality of strike, they, they were so far different. And for me, that's a real positive sign in terms of just how forgiving these irons are. When I do a review, I'm asking myself questions, questions that I think that I would personally ask and hopefully the ones that you might ask as viewers that you want answering. And one of those would be with this type of iron is who are they aimed at? What type of golfer would they suit? The honest answer to that question would be pretty much most of us, I think. Um, all the problems that we've had with sort of game improvement irons of a class them as that in the past, the flyer off the face, uh, the, the, um, the, the differentials across the face, like I said, was always a criticism. I think that's gone now. Um, the, the forgiveness in these irons, as I demonstrated with those two nine irons, is incredible. I don't know any golfer that wouldn't benefit from that from whatever level you play at. The profile of these things, particularly just the standard product, is not too bad in terms of that top line. But even when you go to the, uh, the Max product, yes, it gets bulky, but for many, as I always say, it'd be confidence inspiring. But we're just getting to that stage now with irons as I think we were with, uh, we are rather with drivers whereby they're, how much further can we go? Because honestly, these irons are extremely good. They've, they've managed to do a job of um, any little minor issues you might have found in the past in terms of criticisms. They're fine tuning these things all the time. 
the sound and feel thing again is perfectly good you know it's uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's a little bit harsh perfectly good it's very good and and surprisingly good is the thing they've they've done a job here in my opinion Taylor Main. right a gorgeous morning down here at Conway this morning uh, and I'm enjoying this review we've got little breeze it's a nice morning but don't forget if uh, you like what you see in this video please consider hitting that subscribe button and also maybe giving it a little bit of a like. It certainly helps promote the channel and the video. Appreciate it. Before I play this par three, I think uh, one of the things that's got to be thrown into the mix is the cost, uh, of which I have no opinion on. And uh, that's for two reasons. One is because right now as I stand on this tee, I have no idea how much they are, but that will be on screen for you now. And that'll be an RRP. So that still doesn't tell us what they'll actually retail for. But the second being, I have no opinion on people's affordability and how they gauge whether a club is worth it or not. I've got a fair old idea where this will sit, very much like every model in this category will do. It's up to you to decide whether you think you want to spend your hard-earned cash on these. For now, I'm going to get me nine iron out and see if we can get one close to this flag. It's going to be close, you know. That's not bad. He says, with a big grin on his face. Come on, we've got to give these clubs some plaudits, haven't we? I mean, they're nine irons, and like I said, they're supposed to be pinging and firing off the face. That's the traditional criticism. The feel of them is, uh, is surprisingly good, as is their consistency off that face, even with those uh, shorter irons. Right, we will have a very brief look at uh, the tech spec in these irons, and what Taylor made has said they've done to improve on last year's model. And the first thing, there's two elements I want to have a look at. One of them being uh, what they've changed from last year is this speed bridge. And I've got last year's model in front of me now, and it was a simple but effective method of strengthening that top line. And it was a support that went from the, uh, from the sole, connected in one position up to that top line and supported that club face. Made perfect sense. We've seen it in other designs as well. What they've done this year, if they took that one step further if you like and they've got this one piece polymer insert that stretches right the way from heel uh, into the toe area and it effectively supports the whole of that top line it's only covering the back that whole cavity inside is exactly the same but it effectively supports that top line and what they're saying improves stability in the club face allows the face to flex that little bit more and promote faster ball speeds right across the club face so that can only be a good thing the other thing that of note is the echo dampening system. That was something that was in last year's model, but I think it's been a very effective system in making a great sounding product and therefore feeling product. I think that's one thing they've done really well with this game improvement set of irons. I don't think there's anything more to say about the tech stuff, and I think we now need to get into that final element of this review, which is dry ball data and how did these perform in the hands of the average golfer right so before we finally get into that data i just want to mention a couple of things about first of all the profile of the irons and how they differ between the two models i think in last year's models there was not a great deal of difference between the two where you can clearly see now the visible differences so the width of sole the width of top line the sort of bulk and mass on that os model is significantly different uh, than the standard and i think that's probably a good thing it really does aim at two different categories of golfer depending again on what it is you're looking for the other thing is the strength of loft which was the same as last year real strong in that os model at 26 and a half degrees uh, 28 and a half degrees in the standard so still extremely strong but what you'll see when you come into the dry ball data it's again not a reflection in terms of how far they carry and that's that balance between that launch yes uh, loft which is strong 
but that loft, the CG placement, and where we end up with in terms of overall carry and spin number. So let's get into that dry ball data. I'll start off with the seven iron numbers as we would normally. I'll put the both sets of numbers and uh, it's clear to see which is which, but what surprises me is that there's two degrees difference in terms of loft, but it doesn't reflect in the numbers. And I think we pretty much found that last year. So just a couple of yards to split them or not even that, a yard and a half in terms of average carry. Peak height was significantly different. Um, again, that was relative to loft. Land angle, again, a bit of a difference there. Launch angle, you can see the differences. So the loft came into play in terms of launch angle, in terms of land angle, and in terms of peak height. It didn't greatly affect spin rate, which was also great to see. And from this type of iron, lofted as strongly as they are, to be spinning in and around 5,500 revs was a really good number. And then I also hit a 5 iron because I think what's also great in these irons is they hit the longer clubs and just see how easy they are, if you like, forgive them, whatever the word you want to use is, to hit these type of irons. So it would certainly be the longest iron I put in my bag if I use this set. Um, again, 189, 194 carries. And again, you can see those launch angles are different. And again, relative to where the difference is in loft. When you do a review or when I do a review, you're always looking to kind of pick faults in terms of, um, you're obviously looking for the good points, but you're also looking to pick out bad points. The challenge I'd set to anybody who's sort of watching is what are the bad points in these irons? Because I think visually they look really, really good. I love that sort of polymer insert that they've put in. I love the way they've made it look. Um, the graphite grain, just that little hint of this turquoise color is fantastic. I wish they'd have done something like that in the sole of the driver. That had a far, a far more appealing to me. So they look really good. The two different profiles each appeal to the different type of golfer who's gonna wanna use them. The dry ball date has been really good. They've then in a game improvement iron got fantastic sound and feel. It was really good on that short game that we highlighted a lot down on the links at Conway where you really got a response into the hands. So it goes back to that question that I asked and I asked myself, where would you be critical of these irons? I think you'd struggle to be honest with you. I can't see how anyone would pick up those irons and be disappointed with them. This is never a sales, a commercial for tailor-made. I couldn't care less whether you buy these, whether you try these, whatever you do, I'm not interested. But I will say, if I do a review, I'll pick fault where I can find it, but in these two sets of irons, I think it's very difficult, and I would struggle. I would really struggle to where I would criticize any aspect of that uh, set of irons, both sets of irons. Really, really good. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. Um, the usual appeals at the end, which are really boring, is hit the like button. It is greatly appreciated, even though it's boring to ask for it. Subscribe if you don't already, and uh, I'll see you soon. We still continue lots and lots of uh, product reviews still to come in, uh, in the next few weeks, so keep on watching.